Welcome to Some Guy's Garage. Quick video for you today. I just picked up a Tiny SA Ultra. It's a Tiny Spectrum Analyzer. Um, these are a couple hundred bucks. Uh, it was a little under a couple hundred dollars to Canada. And it's a full bandwidth, so from low kilohertz, megahertz, whatever, all the way up to six gigahertz um, Spectrum Analyzer. So it shows you the um, active frequency ranges that are broadcasting in the area. I don't have a lot of experience with this thing, so it's just kind of a quick first look at it. Um, the reason I picked this up is I sometimes, as you've probably seen on the channel, do audio related things and have wireless microphones. And it's good to be able to see what other frequencies are in use when you're using wireless microphones so you don't get interference. So that's why I picked it up, but it'll scan AM, FM, um, all of your things like key fobs, all the way up to Wi-Fi, cellular, and things like that. It'll pick up all of that different frequency range. So today, not much of a review how-to, but just kind of a quick look, and I'll show you how it picks up microphones and key fobs, just as an example. Just before that, it comes with the actual device itself. It's USB-C rechargeable, also has a memory card in it, and a headphone slot. Um, you can kind of see those here, so USB, memory, and a headphone slot, so you can listen to what's going on, record samples, and you're able to actually connect it to the computer with the included USB cable. Um, to do signal analysis on the computer itself. Um, comes with the little antenna here. I have a 20 dB attenuator attached to it. Um, apparently there's a max input, so you can see it says plus six dB and five volts. So an attenuator just helps keep it below that range. With the included antenna, I think I'm okay. I don't ever actually have, or I haven't seen any signals that high, but it's just kind of a good precaution and Given that I'm just trying to find general frequencies in use, it doesn't matter as much about getting the um, perfect signal to noise ratio or the lowest no noise floor as possible anyway. Um, and there's an adjustment in the software itself that says, hey, I've got a negative 20 dB external gain and it can automatically compensate it. So you get a real reading despite the raised noise floor. Other than that, it does come with a lanyard with a little thing to help you poke the screen, uh, a couple of cables with a coupler as well. Um, the cables can be used from the calibration to the actual RF port to be able to calibrate, self-calibrates the unit. Um, or you can use these to hook up to a radio or something if uh, you have the right adapters and all of that. Of course, keeping in mind that max level that you don't want to go too high when you have a direct coupling. So putting like five watts into that um, with a you know fairly powerful handheld radio could actually break the unit. And then just uh, the only other features, there's a scroll toggle wheel on the top and the power switch. So let's hit the power switch and start it up. So you'd be able to see now that it's actually scanning. It's a very slow scan because it's on full bandwidth. Um, so it is a touch screen. You can just touch or you can actually use the little wheel at the top to move through things as well. Um, but we'll adjust the frequency range here. Um, we'll start at, let's say, 90 megahertz and go up to 110 megahertz and that's the fm radio band so if we extend the antenna up here nothing okay so i thought it would pick up radio signals but apparently my garage blocks almost all of them um, so I went outside and just double checked and yeah, you can actually pick up radio signals, but the garage there is almost nothing. So instead of that, I will show you with the wireless microphones. So I'm going to change it to 400 megahertz and up to 600 megahertz. So that's the band that my wireless mics are in. They're mid 500s or something like that. I've got a couple of them here. So these are Shure SLXD um, with beta 58 heads on them and they're both on different frequencies but we'll just turn one on a little ways from the antenna. Like I said, I don't want to over um, load it with the output of these. These are 10 milliwatt transmitters, so it shouldn't be too bad, but we'll just keep them a little ways away. And so you can see when I turn that first one on, that one's set at 476 right now, 475, 476, as long as it doesn't roll away on me here. And I'll turn the other one on and we'll get a second peak as well. And that one is, um, depending on which one it picks up, actually we can, add more peaks to this as well. So in the markers, we can go to two markers. There we go. And we can see that one of the antennas is at 509. So that's what I was thinking in the 500s. And the other one is at 476. Um, these are both in the same G58 band, I think sure calls it. Um, but you're able to actually see what frequencies are in use. And if somebody else was using wireless microphones in the area, you'd be able to, I'm assuming my garage doesn't block at all, you'd be able to see those signals here and then could coordinate the frequencies of your wireless gear, my wireless gear, um, with the other frequencies that are getting used in the area. 
And you can see uh, if I turn them off, then the trace goes away. Same with this one. And also as I kind of move it away or around, you can see the different levels um, as it changes how much signal is actually getting to the antenna. So pretty handy tool in that sense. The other thing it should be able to pick up is a key fob. So again, I'll just change the frequency range here. Um, we're gonna go from 300, I think these are in the 300 range, to 400. So change the frequency. And now if I press a button here, you're probably gonna hear the vehicle lock because it's behind me. But you can see there at 314 megahertz is the signal for the uh, lock button. And if I unlock, uh, you can see again there, and it looks like 312 megahertz. So different frequencies for lock and unlock, but yeah, it's able to pick up the actual key fob actuating as well. So, and then the other thing probably interested in is the 2.4 gigahertz band. So where Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and all of those things are. The nice thing about the ultra versus the regular one is the ultra goes up above 800 megahertz all the way to around six gigahertz. So this one's actually able to pick up those higher frequencies where the other one isn't. So let's again, change our frequency range. So we're gonna start at 2.35 gigahertz and stop at let's say 2.5 gigahertz and the other thing about wi-fi is it's more it's not a constant signal so it kind of is a bunch of bursts so what i will do here is turn off the spur removal um, you can see maybe there are a few of the bursts coming through the other thing we can do though is if we go to not display but trace here and calc and do max hold and we'll just give it a moment here as various wi-fi signals again i'm in the garage so there's probably a little bit less but you'll be able to see them start coming up and showing up here as different wi-fi signals get picked up yeah, a couple different bands going on there but yeah as different traffic is going over the wi-fi you can see the uh the different bands that the wi-fi or whatever other um, 2.4 or gigahertz signals are actually happening with this but anyway, I've probably just scratched the surface. Apparently this thing can transmit. You could listen to actually FM radio, not in the garage apparently, but you could actually listen to FM radio through the headphone port. Um, there's good videos from the creator of this on YouTube. So I'll link a few of those in the description just so you can check those out. Um, he'll do a way better job of explaining it than I will. But yeah, it's a pretty interesting device to see different radio signals that are in your area and be able to see what's in use and not. These sort of instruments used to cost thousands of thousands of dollars and being able to buy something like this for a couple hundred dollars now is really exciting. Just opens up so many possibilities for, let's call it amateurs, to actually have some good signal analysis equipment. Anyway, like I said, just a quick first look at the device. If you have any questions about it, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to answer, but I'm not an expert at this point. If you aren't already subscribed, please consider it. And as always, thanks for watching.